Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video episode, I'll show you the code snippet and explain how to render dynamic forms in Streamlit. So let's uh, go and jump to my screen. This is the application I'm using and uh, it, the, the purpose of this application to allow users to label or, label or annotate uh, uh, documents like invoices or receipts. Uh, select uh, uh, select uh, um, elements on top of the receipt document and uh, on the in, on the form on the side uh, assign proper labels or fixed values that uh, that were um, calculated or constructed by OCR engine. Yeah, right. And the idea is here that as soon as as user selects the element, then uh, the form is updated and. Uh, uh, form element which is uh, related to the uh, to the rectangle that is selected on the canvas becomes enabled and user can uh, change the label over here or fix the value and save the data. All right, so obviously this form is dynamic because uh, every document will have different set of uh, elements to uh, process and we need to render form dynamically. And dynamic forms are generated uh, very easily in Streamlit because it runs uh, with Python on the server side and with Python it's easy to implement dynamic stuff. And then the form UI is uh, rendered uh, by Streamlit um, from the server and uh, the HTML is <coughs> response is returned back to the, to, to the client. So all the job is done on the server side. And if we <coughs> jump to the code, we'll see this is the portion of the code that um, renders the dynamic form. It can be improved because uh, there are two columns and uh, <clears throat> the, the code for both columns is um, uh, technically the same, so we can write uh, write a function and call it from, from the loop. But just for for the simplicity and because this code will be, uh, maybe will be changed in the future, I just keep it like that for now. Anyway, but the idea is that first we calculate uh, number of columns uh, so uh, either one or two, uh, we divide by two columns, uh, by, by two, uh, the, the length of the fields. And then this allows us to understand how many rows we'll have in the first column and the rest of the fields will go to the second column. So in a loop we iterate through the Python dictionary and we check if uh, we should still render in the first column or in the second. And if we are in the first, we're using Streamlit um, column one element and then we, uh, in the other case we're using column two element and <coughs> inside the column we um, for example we render the text input uh, select box <coughs> and based on uh, user input from the select box or uh, value which was changed by updating uh, rectangle rectangle data for this specific entry the same thing is done uh, inside the second column that's why i mentioned that Technically, you could create um, just a function to <clears throat> to minimize the number of code. Yeah, and the uh, because Streamlit application, where every time when you click uh, on the UI, uh, a request is sent to the server and the, the script is re-executing. So every time on every request, it will re-execute. Uh, so you need to uh, adjust your mind to the way how Streamlit works uh, because there are no callbacks, and uh, this is why. Uh, you need to call update update rectangle or data because maybe in this request uh, data will be changed. Maybe not if uh, yeah. But in any case, we need to call update rectangle or data with the values that are being returned from the text input and from from select box. If the values will not be changed, they'll stay the same. Uh, essentially, function will execute, but they'll stay the same. If the values will change, uh, then uh, they'll be updated. Uh, this way of coding um, may look like redundant initially, but uh, at the same time it makes the application flow simpler and I think it's well suitable for the data applications. Right. And one thing to mention, uh, you know, to be able to render uh, columns, because uh, th those two columns are for the form. So like this, this is the first column, this is the second column. But this Streamlit application is using um, uh, also other set of columns to first column to render the uh, document, second column to render this form. And by default, uh, Streamlit application doesn't allow to uh, run 
nested uh, columns on the second level. To make it possible, I'm, I installed uh, Streamlit nested layout uh, community component and uh, you just need to import that component and uh, the rest you don't need to do anything, you just uh, use the columns as you want and, and it magically works. Hopefully the same functionality in the future will be available in Streamlit out of the box. Yeah, so this quick explanation uh, shows you how to uh, render dynamic forms in Streamlit. This is really simple because it could, and it's done on Python on the server side and you don't need to worry about HTML, JavaScript stuff. All, this, all, all those things are taken care out of the box by Streamlit. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.